Hey, good afternoon, America. It's Patrick Lovell, Truth Bomb riffing at approximately 2 p.m. Mountain Standard Time on Monday, January 8th, 2024. The new year is fast upon us. And of course, tonight is the national championship. Unfortunately for many of us who had a dog in the fight, we're going to see Michigan versus Washington, which is a replay of, I think, a Rose Bowl 1988-ish, in which I think Washington actually won that one. And uh, maybe it was 1991. Maybe it was the last time that Washington won a national championship. In either case, I was rooting for the Texas Longhorns. But we're going to watch it. It's going to be fun. And I'm going to record this as a quick sort of hello and try to get your head wrapped around all of the other things that matter outside of sports, which actually matter a great deal to many of us. But the information that I'm bringing to you is monumentally larger and more important than those things that actually entertain us and keep us occupied while we're all squirrels on the ger or ger gerbils on the gerbil wheel just spinning 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 chasing that lettuce chasing that cheese man while the power just keeps on powering on and I've got to somehow wake you up to how this whole thing works such that we millions 10 millions of us tens of millions of us can get on the same page and try to set things straight before it goes from way, 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 way bad to way, 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 way worse, if that's even possible, considering the last 20 years. So who am I? My name is Patrick Lovell. I'm an investigative journalist. I'm a muckraking journalist. If you don't know what muckraking means, please look it up. Learn and then discover my work at www.thecon.tv, which is the layout of the world's largest criminal conspiracy in history that never ended and that, to my knowledge, We've had millions of views, but we need to reach tens of millions of people. And we made this available for free. Once again, I'll put it into the uh, – and actually, I haven't done this enough, and I need to start doing this. But I'll put it in the description um, uh, down below so that you can actually just click on it. Because we made the con free because all Americans buy our lives. And you can also check out my work at the New Untouchables as well as, of course, all things at Patrick Level Truth Bombs the con on youtube please like and subscribe please share more importantly please come on board please become an investor please become a member please join this crusade to purge corruption because if we the people don't rise to the moment no one else will and no one else can and i'm i promise you we have to and you've got to listen to me and you've got to hear me and i know this for a fact i know that there's most of us are good people in the united states even those that wear like, you know, upside down, I shouldn't say the upside down American flag because that seems more in line with what it is that I'm professing. That's the American flag in distress. There's also a thin blue line. It was kind of the cover story of an op-ed in the New York Times a couple of days ago that indicates kind of being in uh, centrifugal with the police or on board or loyal to the police and that it's the police that are really going to save us through times of chaos and havoc. But who are the police exactly and who do they support and why? Ultimately, everyone should support the Constitution and the notions of liberty and justice for all and the, the law being equal and that the law has integrity so that absolute power cannot be corrupting absolutely. But all of us know that it is. In fact, I'd say a vast majority of us that are professionals, um, you know, are kind of in this camp of like, Jesus, things are out of control but it's way beyond my ability to do anything, so I'm just going to let everything play out. Or those that are actually in control have so many resources that there's nothing I can do. So you just kind of like, oh, you know what? I'm just going to look out for my own. I'm going to protect my family. I'm going to protect the assets that I have. I'm going to go to work. I'm going to make my money, and I'm going to do what it is that I can because there's really nothing else I can do. And what I'm going to say to you and to everybody else that can hear me and please spread the word that it's, you don't realize it's up to you. It's up to us. If we don't rise with the information that I have, and what information do I have? I have the information of how this whole system runs and how it's illegal. And if we actually had an infrastructure where the government was doing its job, we wouldn't have these problems. But of course we don't. And instead, what are we looking at? Well, we're looking at a 2024 election that is really starting to ramp up. Well, we all know we're going to be faced with the lesser of two evils approach. And for the record, you know, if it comes down to, once again, Biden versus Trump, I'm going to take Biden. Trump is a devilishly, fiendishly, idiotic, 
Mad Magazine, you know, uh, projection of idiocracy in a manner that just is so beyond gut wrenching and deplorable. Yeah, I said deplorable in ways that uh, I can't even comprehend. And I bring this back to like, you know, listen, most of us in America love to be entertained, right? We love to go to our concerts. We love to go to our sporting events. We love to go to our comedians. We love to go to our whatever entertainment it might be for movies to monster, monster truck pools to, you know, uh, bull riding tournaments, whatever the case is. And most of us that go to wherever and we kind of express ourselves with our T-shirts and our hats and whatever the case may be and whatever side we fit on and whatever the artist or the comedian might project that we fall more in line with. I've seen all of these things because I've been to all of these events and I've been to bars that are biker bars. I've been to, you know, bars where you'll go to see cowboys or, you know, return, um, you know, army, um, I, I don't know, special forces type guys. I've been, I've been to, you know, full on San Francisco elitist, you know, tech. I, I, I've seen it all. All right. And, and nine times out of 10, all of that, which kind of, differentiates who we are in terms of how we live our lives and everything else. Most of us just want to take care of the people we love in a way that we obviously have an opportunity to do what we're supposed to do and whatever assets we come to acquire and aggregate throughout our lives. Hopefully everything's in play that where we can move forward and be dynamic and, and live that life that we try to live. And that's really where it ends for the most part. Most of us aren't so ambitious that we want to be like Dr. Evil, where we take over the entire world and somehow it, it, it runs for us. You no, know, but we're aware that there's a lot of people in the machine and systems, particularly in finance, particularly in fossil fuel, military industrial complex, a whole handful of other things, tech comes to mind that we know are. And so for the regular person that's just like trying to get by in their life, you know, we always hope and expect somebody else to do what needs to be done to keep this country doing what it's supposed to do for the rest of us. But many of us over the course of like decades have gotten to the point where we really just expect that and rely on it, even though we know it's going down the drain and we see it right in front of our faces, but we're not willing to do anything about it. And so what you need to be aware of based on the work that I show you that gives you the details of what everybody has instinct about, i.e. that the system is corrupt and that nobody knows who did what, what did what, when and how. And everybody's just basically getting played. And that's the weird thing about this, right? Because ultimately the top 5% have done very well with the system. The top 10%, okay. The top 0.1%, incredibly well. The top 0.01%, they're running away with it. I tell you that billionaires spend billions to loot trillions. It's called corruption. Absol absolute power corrupts absolutely. And when a group of men discover plunder in society, they create a legal code to authorize it and a moral code to glorify it. None of which is democracy. None of it is integrity of the law. And you can't have integrity of the law. You can't have democracy without the integrity of the law. Oh, but Patrick, we're a constitutional republic. <clears throat> sure. You mean we're a rule by the minority that can lie, steal, and cheat its way to gerrymander districts and vote voting code to, you know, make sure that every vote is thrown out or discourage people from coming to the to the to polls because they've got to, you know, basically wait in line uh, that wraps around the church four times and wait ten hours to get a vote. Yeah, there's ways that things can happen that basically make the system completely upside down and inside out, particularly with our financial system. And it's it's at the end of the road, guys. And we know most of us, and, and you're hearing it, of course, from the blue wave, blue no matter who, that you know this is all about fascism and the end of democracy. And I can tell you right now that we've lost our democracy long ago. Don't believe me? Look into what the Princeton... Research revealed, I don't know, what, like 11 years ago, basically, that we're like 90, more like 75% of the time that Americans are all in on a specific issue, it never passes through Congress. Except the 1% of the people that pay for their politicians get everything from tax code to 
you know, deregulation to whatever the case is past 99% of the time. That's called tyranny. And that's what we're in the midst of. I don't know how many of you remember your elementary school lessons about American history, but we had a revolution to break the grip of tyranny. And then we had a civil war to break the grip of bondage. And we continue to do it as Americans, and we have, and we're yet at another pivotal, pivotal moment um, in the history of the United States to where it's going to be we the people. It has to be we the people that come to the forefront equipped with the information that, I hate to say it, only I can provide you. I know that absolutely sounds ridiculous. Some of you have called me a narcissist for saying so. And no, you're not me. You're not Patrick Lovell. You didn't go out and get millions of dollars to go wrap around this country to get all of the details of the world's largest criminal conspiracy and cover-up in history that never ended that I continue to reveal to you is the intersection of what happens at the Federal Reserve. Because if you understand anything about the only God in America is money, then where does money come from? Does it grow on trees? No, it's digitized into existence. That's called monetary policy. What does that mean? Well, it means a lot when you have a financialized rigged economy that runs through asset managers and hedge funds and private equity and a whole litany of other ways in which all sorts of deception and theft and upside down perverted control fraud has completely hijacked the United States, which I'm telling you, which is far beyond any crazy sort of Orwellian-like fictional depiction of what we've seen in movies for like literally 50 freaking years. But it's real. And I've got the answers. And no, it's not conspiracy theory. It's conspiracy fact. And really, the craziest and most outrageous thing about it at the end of the day is that it's not a bunch of genius wizards that pulled this off for the most part. Let me tell you, there is a lot of incompetence at the, at the ultimate, at the highest levels, to where just stupid stuff happens, to where just it funnels money upward to the rich. And that's just how it works. Why? Because the American people aren't a threat to stop it. That's why. You know, recently, a lot of us have been hearing, for example, the economy is doing so well. And, uh, you know, the job market is fantastic. But how many of you out there have many jobs? And you're just hanging on your fingertips and then you're spending so much money on your credit card to be able to go to the set events that I talked about earlier to just have fun with your family and do all of these other things. Meanwhile, your, your entire life is skating on thin ice and it's a butt pucker. And anything that goes sideways, rise in interest rates, you know, maybe the value of your home and based on what you owe on it and everything else, you could be in a whole world of misery very quickly if things go the wrong way, which inevitably they always do. And that's part of the game. It's called smash and grab. It's been in play for like literally hundreds of years. We're just very good at the most recent version of it. And I'm just trying desperately to wake up tens of millions of you because the only way we're going to get organized and the only way we're going to pull off a mass movement to do what I'm doing, what I, what I prop, you know, I, I, my proclamation is that I'm creating a tidal wave populist crusade to purge corruption. And corruption births and fuels fascism. And I'm fighting for our democracy and I'm fighting for the rule of law. And yeah, I have went the distance on behalf of the United States to get all of these things. Ultimately, we spent millions of dollars, did tens and th tens of thousands of hours of effort to be able to bring you what ultimately became in 2009, the $33 trillion truth. And as by the time we got to, let's call it 2020, we were over 70 trillion to a very tiny group of people that have complete control of the system. Does it sound pretty insane? Yeah, it is. What are you going to do about it? You're going to pick up, you know, you're going to go buy a cannon and go fire it at City Hall? Are you going to go buy a tank and you're going to take on the United States military? Are you going to go buy an AR-15 and join a militia to take on the United States military? No, you're not going to do that. And even if you were going to do that, you wouldn't win. But the only ones who can win are the insiders. And that's how this whole thing works. That's how the January 6th insurrection Worked And by the way, if you want to question everything I say, and it doesn't matter what side of the fence you are on Trump. The United States government is demonstrating that everything that Arnold Trump is being indicted for to prove, which is, of course, illegal and eventually, let's hope, convicted of, is everything that they're not telling you that I'm telling you that Wall Street got away with. And that controls our country. And they basically pulled a coup d'etat in 2009 and they hijacked everything and they own the courts. They own everything. I'll never forget going actually, well, I don't want to go into it. I'm going to kind of keep it short today. But look, 
please check out the work. You've got to understand. Let me let me put this into perspective on this way, because a lot of people are paying attention to Jeffrey Epstein right now. I'm convinced this whole latest release of the names on the list and everything else is just another inside sort of intelligence apparatchik to make sure you don't understand what really is the story behind whatever Epstein was. And I did a truth bomb ref the other day where I laid out what exactly is Epstein. But ultimately, the biggest questions are not so much who are the rich guy billionaires that had this fetish to be involved with potentially being around young women and everything that took place from there from Prince Harry to David Copperfield, to Michael Jackson, to, of course, Donald Trump and Bill Clinton and everybody else that's with Stephen Hawking, among others. Right. And, and then, of course, there was hedge fund guys that didn't really fully make the animated list of what everybody's been talking about. But they were the real important guys, to be honest with you. But meanwhile, the real story is J.P. Morgan Chase and everything J.P. Morgan Chase was involved with. And obviously the most important CEO of this country, Jamie Dimon, and how that works. And. Yeah, nobody's talking about that in mainstream. Why not? Well, because that would reveal a whole lot of what I'm talking about. And quite frankly, that's just the first run, my friends. The work that we do in the kind is unbelievable in terms of if you ever knew of understood of Watergate. I mean, Watergate is tiny in comparison to what it is that I've revealed. And we've got to build a movement. And the, the bottom line is we have no time to lose. And what is the movement going to do? Well, it's in effort to create what we call the Clean New Deal. And to create the Clean New Deal, A, we've got to have an investigation that basically purges everything based on what we pulled off in our work, but a high, high level where suddenly everybody's not talking about Epstein and Trump and all of these other things. They're talking about what I'm talking about, which controls everything. And if we had the ability to get inside the system, create the investigations just like our country did at the, uh, after the Great Depression with the Bacor, Bacor investigations that got us the Glass-Steagall Act and the Securities and Exchange Commission. That's a version of what we're going to do with the Clean New Deal. But in addition to that, you, the American people, need to understand that $70 trillion was looted, stolen, illegally from the system right before your eyes because everybody that's got a microphone isn't telling you the story because they're all feeding from it. The, 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 the corruption is absolutely insane. And that's why I'm the only guy that is giving you this information. And that if you, me, and everybody you see who isn't a Nazi, who believes in dignity and decency and integrity and liberty and justice for all, if we unite, uh, we can uh, defeat the misery of tyranny. And that's our destiny. And that's called the Clean New Deal. The long and the short of it is, if you invest $13, and by the way, I will also put down in the um, comment in the in the in the description down below. I'll I'll give you the Levy study. You can look at the twenty nine trillion dollar truth, which has since been elevated, as well as other things that'll give you some background and citations and everything else, as well as what Epstein is up to, or I should say, what Epstein was all about. And you can kind of take a further you know glimpse into that. But you got to spread the word. Patrick Lovell is the only guy who's got all of these answers that could put it together to bring all the good guys in the system so that we, the people, can basically rise to the moment and save our democracy, save the world, and find a much better way to spend $70 trillion than on corruption. Rise, roar, revolt, onwards and upwards. When you have the truth, you're bulletproof. It's not rocket science. It's racketeering. This, my friends, is the righteous grind. If you can invest $13 um, in the spirit of the original 13 colonies who basically rose to the moment to challenge the largest empire at their, at their time to defeat them and to create the United States based on separation of powers and, of course, in order to form a more perfect union, that's what side we're on. We need tens of millions of you, and the sand is running out of the hourglass, and this situation is not going to get better. It's going to get worse. So please. Invest today, share the word, dive in, like, subscribe, share, reach out to me, join the movement. All the best.